okay? Um, it's a fun reading, sometimes I do like a soulmate reading, sometimes I do hot topics reading, so just something that's light and fun, not to, take in, not to be taken too seriously. This week I'm going to be talking about the rivalry between Prin Prince Harry and Prince Charles. So I don't know if you've been keeping up with my videos, if not, I recommend looking at the playlist and you'll see the past readings I've done, particularly about the royal family. Um, somebody who used to reside in the UK and a Commonwealth country, South Africa, um, you know, the royals are kind of seen as, to me, uh, seen as like these people that people think are celebrities, but they actually have a lot of stuff to do. And I pick up strongly, I already pulled the cards, but the energy that I pick up between the two of them is that there's been, there's been rivalry for a long time. And actually, the last reading I did last week, spoke, touched on it, touched on the rivalry. But I want to expand on it. So I'm excited to do this. My name is Hali. If you don't follow me, please make sure you do so you keep up with my daily readings. And yeah, let's get into it. So this is the rivalry between Prince Harry and Prince Charles. Prince Charles is the oldest, or the eldest. And he is, I believe, 39. And Prince Harry is 36. I remember correctly, yes. Um, 35 but to be 36 this year, I believe. So, that being said, um, he is Charles, Prince Charles is a Capricorn, I believe. I look, this, no, he's a Gemini. <laughs> he's a Gemini and Prince Harry is a Virgo. So, already there's a rivalry, in my opinion. I mean, it does depend on other placements in your chart, but there is a certain Geminis are air signs and Virgos are earth signs, and I feel like they might complement each other to a certain point. But then, if the Virgo wants to override or can become possessive of a family, Gemini will step in and say that's not going to happen. So I want to make this as least biased as possible. I mean, I've mentioned before, I'm not a fan of the world, but I do think we can learn something from this, especially as a lot of us have siblings and a lot of us are kind of raised in these systems that uphold, um, to me, systemic abuse and we are breaking free of that in the age of Aquarius. And the reason I say systemic abuse is that it doesn't seem to me like they have a very healthy family. And the reason why is when I pulled the cards, first card I got was Nine of Swords. And this is about betrayal. Um, feeling as like an outsider, I feel like Harry might have felt kicked out. I picked this up last time too. I think ever since he was a child, um, it seems like, and I feel like the public has picked up on this too, that Harry was like, sorry, Charles, I keep using the names, Charles, the oldest, was the propped up child, and that comes with a lot of pressure. So with Queen of Pentacles and the Emperor, Charles and Kate are in this kind of um, relationship where it's about keeping up with appearances and the Emperor is the one who leads. The Emperor is always like de delegating, being diligent, following orders, taking leadership. So this to me is Charles and Kate and Kate is upholding the traditional values and it's funny because you know, I've said, I said this last week and I'll say it this week that I do not agree with how Megan is treated but I don't agree with her saying that it's the first time anybody's been treated like this. It's completely false. I mean, I was alive during Princess Diana, I was alive during Princess Fergie, so I remember how they were treated. And to me, they were treated worse than her, so, than she. So I just want to put that into perspective 
that Kate in the beginning was also treated like this because I remember I was in my last year of high school when they started dating, I believe they started dating, and they went in on her. But her family, because I believe because she was raised, um, not necessarily in the royal sense, but if you're raised in British culture, you know what you're getting yourself into when you marry uh, a prince. It's not easy. And I think she was trained and coached to be the Queen of Pentacles, who is very stable, knows her, stays in line, doesn't cause us, doesn't rock the boat. And this created a kind of jealousy in Harry. So with the King of Wands, you have the King of Wands, you know, it's funny, King of Wands in the other decks isn't as kind of vindictive as he is here. He's like, <laughs> you know, because I feel like he kind of feels like his brother was taken away from him when they got married. But also he feels like he will never compare to what these two have. So at the bottom of the deck is the Six of Swords. And Six of Swords, if you can see over here, is about releasing. So I feel like he was released from his family. And Knight of Cups, there, is, there are times where he misses his family. See how he's looking into the cup? He misses his family a lot. Even though he acts like they've pushed him out and they might have, they might have, but I feel like he was troubled for a long time, not just this event. And so, as I clarified, Six of Swords and the King of Wands, because I wanted to feel his energy, I got Four of Swords and Knight of Inspiration. So, Knight of Inspiration is Knight of Wands. So, similar energy here. It's kind of like he's been whisked away, which would make sense. I feel like Megan kind of whisked him away. And he's going to start making money and moving forward with his own life. I do have a feeling that they're going to talk again. I did mention this in the first reading that I did um, about Megan and Harry. I feel is a, and a lot of it has come true. I feel like most of what I said is coming true, except I predicted that they won't stay together. I still feel like that's going to happen. It's not what I'm wishing on them. It's just what the cards tell me. And Prince Harry and Prince Charles are going to make amends. I feel that very, very strongly. Because he's going to, Harry's going to understand that his brother just wanted the best for him by being strict on him. And sometimes it's hard to understand that, you know? But I do think um, Harry was kind of a brat and Charles wanted to keep him in line. So he might have overdone it, but he just felt like he was spiraling out of control. So he had to. I feel like he's been very stern, very hard on him. And I was looking at pictures of Prince Charles to get energy and I was like, he looks, I mean, sorry, not Charles, I keep William. Oh my goodness, can you believe I called Charles William and William? I totally, this whole time, I meant to call Charles William. Oh my goodness, <laughs> all these names. I'm the worst with, when names are common names, I forget them so easily. <laughs> and it's like William, Charles, it's, it's really bad, but goes in one ear, comes out the other. Okay, and most people I went to school with have names like William and Charles. Or that I grew up around, and Matthew, and stuff like that. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, you have one of those names. <laughs> so I met William. So William um, is very stern. He felt like people weren't taking care of Harry and they were misguiding him. So he stepped in and he took on that role. So let's see when they will talk. Again, the next two years, 
they're going to have a talk and I feel as though Kate is going to spur. I get the strong sense that Kate is going to be the one to bring them together. It won't be Megan. <laughs> okay, so over the next two years, and this is my intuition, please don't take it as fact. Over the next two years, there's gonna be a lot of drama on Harry's side. And Harry and Meghan, with the magician and the lover's card, are going to end things. Because of that, he will become very isolated. I mean, he's already isolated, but he's going to be very blocked with two of swords. And so, to reach out, Kate is going to reach out to him and welcome him back in because she feels as though they were meant to be together. So with the chariot, he's going to move back to England. So that's what I have to do. I wish them all the best of luck. I mean, siblings, relationships are very, very hard. A lot of the time, because we're expected to still be cool with somebody who we might not share the same values with, or we might have outgrown. So if this resonated with you, I'm glad. Um, but this is not to kind of gossip and not to be mean. It's just to learn from the scenario and I think to me the ultimate message is that sometimes it can come across like somebody's being hard and mean like William had when he just meant for his brother Harry to be at peace. I think William took on way more than he was supposed to and kind of feels resentment about it. But yeah, that's what I have for you. So I love you all. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.